Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. From now until June 17th, if you use this promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a Modern Horizons booster box. Also, there is a way to enter the drawing when no purchase necessary. See the description below for the full details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and today we have some Magic the Gathering news stories to touch on, and we're also going to talk about the results of the Grand Prix at Magic Fest Kansas City. We'll look at the top eight deck lists with a special focus of the cards from War of the Spark that are in those decks. Just a quick reminder, I did have some people ask me about Modern Horizons booster boxes. Currently, Flipside Gaming is sold out on pre-orders. I will let you know when they restock. Amazon has a pretty good price right now, too. Last I checked, around $200. I'll leave that link in the description and comments below if you're still looking. With that being said, though, let's get into it. First things first, we found out we got a Magic the Gathering animated Netflix series coming. No release date yet, but we did find out that the Russo brothers are going to be among the executive producers. They most recently worked on Avengers Endgame. So that's pretty exciting news for Magic fans. It feels like Netflix is doing a lot of things well nowadays. Hopefully it'll be a great series when it does premiere. The next big piece of news is the London Mulligan will be adopted when Core Set 2020 is released in July. So starting at that point, when you play any sort of competitive magic, you'll be using the London Mulligan. Quick reminder what that rule is in case you're not aware. Normally, right now, when you draw your seven cards, if you don't like your hand, you shuffle them back in, you draw six cards, so on and so forth. The London Mulligan is a little more forgiving. You're going to draw seven cards. If you don't like that hand, shuffle those cards back into your deck. Draw seven cards again, choose one of those cards, and you put it to the bottom of your deck. Now, if you look at those new seven cards and you don't like those either, you can take a second mulligan, of course. Shuffle, draw seven cards again, this time put two on the bottom of your deck, so on and so forth. Wizards got a lot of positive feedback from this when they tested it with the pros at Mythic Championship 2, which was a modern event as well as a limited event. And they also liked the data that they saw on Magic Online. So it will be coming next summer. Okay, let's move on to Kansas City's Magic Fest and the Grand Prix event that occurred there. The winning deck. Here it is, Esper Hero. Some people would call it Esper Super Friends. We're going to look at the rest of the top eight in just a second, but I wanted you to take a look at the deck that won the whole thing first. And you see a lot of new cards from War of the Spark here, right? This deck couldn't exist without that set. A lot of Super Friends decks are doing very well right now, not just this version, but the Jeskai version has been very popular as well. Let's take a look now at the cards from War of the Spark that make this deck possible. In the main, you have Narset, Parter of Vales, Liliana, Dreadhorde General, Teferi, Time Raveler, Command the Dreadhorde, The Elder Spell, The Spark, Tyrant Scorn, and Oath of Kaya. Out of the sideboard, another copy of Command the Dreadhorde, two more copies of The Elder Spell, and another copy of The Spark. Okay, here's the rest of your top eight. Coming in second place was Gruul Midrange. Third place, Simic Nexus. Fourth place, Boros Aggro. Fifth place, Bant Ramp. Sixth place, Bant Midrange. Seventh place, Mono Red Aggro. Eighth place, Is It Phoenix. So granted, there are some similarities between some of these decks. However, a lot of diversity here. All the top eight decks were at least a little bit different. We're going to take a look at each one. Let's go to that second place, Grill Midrange deck. Here it is. I like this build a lot. This is a deck that couldn't quite take off in the previous season, but War of the Spark brought some new pieces to make it better. Among those new pieces, we see the following cards. Sarkhan the Masterless, Domri Anarchobolas, and Living Twister. Out of the sideboard, Tybalt, Rakish, Instigator. Okay, third place was Simic Nexus. Now, this is a little different from a lot of the Simic Nexus builds we saw at the beginning of the season or last season. This one is not running Wilderness Reclamation. It's running a whole lot more creatures, as you can see here. Hydroid Crisis sometimes would creep into these decks in some way, shape, or form. However, Notice there's no Teferi here of Dominaria here. That was kind of the go-to win condition for a while. So this is kind of a different take on the deck. Let's see what cards came from War of the Spark here. Nissa, who shakes the world, get used to seeing her. Tamio, Collector of Tales, same thing. And Blast Zone is here as well. Out of the sideboard, another card you're going to see a lot today. Narset, Parter of Vales. Fourth place was Boros Aggro, but a lot of people would call this the Feather deck. It isn't that mostly white Boros Aggro deck that we've seen recently. This one is the one that revolves around Feather the Redeemed. We'll look at her and the other cards for more in just a second. But when you look at the deck list, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's an aggressive build. It's going to lean heavily on Feather at times. A lot of cards for more of the Spark here. Dreadhorde Arcanist, 
Krenko, 10th Street Kingpin, Feather the Redeemed, of course, 10th District Legionnaire, Defiant Strike, and Samut Sprint. Out of the sideboard, Gideon Blackblade. Fifth place was Bant Ramp. And this is actually kind of a sweet deck. I love ramp decks. Sometimes they feel a little inconsistent. This one's ramping into some really nice mid rangey effects. Here you have Shalai, Voice of Plenty, Lyra Dawnbringer. I wouldn't call this an angel deck, but a couple of key components there. Also very telling about the meta right now with two entrancing melodies in the main. Hydroid Crisis definitely playing a bigger role again. Where the Spark brings us Nyssa, who shakes the world, to Fairy Time Raveler, Paradise Druid, and Tulsimir, Friend to Wolves. You get another two copies of Tulsimir, Friend to Wolves in the sideboard. Sixth place was Bant Midrange. Now this has the Explorer package, which has been around for many, many months, but the deck itself does have a lot of new components from War of the Spark, and here they are. Nyssa, who shakes the world, Tamio, Collector of Tales, Teferi Time Reveler, Arboreal Grazer, and Finale of Glory. From the sideboard, Narset Harder of Ales, and another copy of Tamio, Collector of Tales. Seventh place, Mono Red Aggro. This is the deck I've been playing a lot on Arena, and I enjoy it. I love Experimental Frenzy. The card is just crazy. And this deck hasn't changed a whole lot recently. There are a couple additions from the newest set, of course, but you see from the Creature Suite and the Spell Suite here, not a whole lot has changed. Let's go ahead and take a look at those cards, though. Two copies of Chandra Fire Artisan. Great card for this build. Out of the sideboard, Tybalt Rakish Instigator. Is it Phoenix? Okay, this comes in eighth place. And this is a Phoenix deck, not a Drake deck this time. They seem to kind of swing back and forth in the meta a little bit. This is also a deck that's going to look pretty familiar to you, kind of been around for a while, at least the core of it. You're going to see your four arc like Phoenix, your cheap spells like your ops, your shock, so on and so forth. What does War of the Spark bring? Augur Bolas, God Eternal Kefnet and Finale of Promise. God Eternal Kefnet has been looking good in the Grixis control decks. Notice none of those decks made the top eight this past weekend. But a lot of different decks have been trying God Eternal Covenant. This feels like a good fit. Maybe it will stick here. And out of the sideboard is Narset Parter of Vales. All right, with that being said, that is the news for today. Until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.